Hello everybody, welcome to another After Effects CS6 tutorial. Today I want to show you how to take your vector images and make them into a 3D image using only After Effects. Now we're in After Effects CS6 and this is the only version that you can really do this nicely in. So we're going to take this uh, vector that I have, which is pretty much just a gear. And I'm going to put it in my uh, comp here. And I'm just going to move my pan behind tool on the center of this gear so we can scale it up. I'm just going to make it somewhat bigger and move it to the middle. And I'm going to hit my uh, collapse transformation tool so it looks uh, a little nice. And I'll come up to 100% so everything looks pretty crisp. Move this in kind of more in the center. Now the the way to do this is different than making your text 3D. So you have to pay a little bit more, pay a little bit of attention, and don't get it confused with how you make your 3D text. So I have my 3D scene already set up with a camera and some lights. Now I'll. Uh, come to the top view so you can see how I have that set up real quick but it's uh, nothing special you can just have a regular camera and light so there's my a light in the back a light in the front and my camera is out there nothing too no, no biggie so just put a camera and a light in there and then you can start doing this so I'm gonna take this gear and I'm gonna make it 3d And I did that by clicking on the cube. And let's see, I have my my uh, preview in adaptive resolution right now, so it's at full quality. I need to twirl down, and usually when you have your text in 3D, so this is a text layer down here, you're going to have the bevel depth, hole depth, and extrusion depth, which we used in a previous tutorial to make that text 3D. When I scroll down in my geometry options for my gear here, you don't have that. You have curvature and segments, which is different. So the way you want to make this 3D is you need to right click on the layer and come over here to create shapes from vector layer. And it's going to take some time to load real quick. But it, as you can see, it created mask shapes all around. and made basically the same vector but using shapes in CS6 so now if we twirl down this shapes layer as you can see the the uh, illustrator layer has been turned off and it did that on its own and this is already 3d twirl down your geometry options and now you've got your bevel styles so let's set it to angular um, I've already done, made this 3D and I found out that 1 is good for the bevel depth and if I do I think 20 on this it turns out into a, a 3D. Wait for it to render out and there we go we've got a 3D object. Now you can use this for if your client gives you a, a logo or anything like that you can use that to make a 3d logo for your client without having to use a 3d program so that's a uh, pretty much that's basically it if you need more instruction about how to use the uh, bevel depth check out my other tutorial so I'll go over the uh, different geometry options here with you in case you didn't see the uh, the tutorial on how to make 3D text. So the bevel styles here are none, which is going to be flat, which most objects in real life aren't flat. I'm going to click on this here to turn off my uh, masks. So if I, as you can see, it turns off the masks. I'm going to actually change this to fast draft so we don't have to wait for renders every time. And we've got angular, which is kind of like a, uh, a straighter bevel. You can see they're they're beveled in. Now we have concave, which gives you another uh, bevel that is like a curved 
uh, in, as you can see here on this edge right here. And then you've got convex, which is a curved out bevel, which looks more realistic on this object. Your bevel depth here is how much bevel is going to be in there. So if I set this to something like five, you can see it's too much because the holes in this are too close together or too small. You can see the bevel depth though on the edge of how it's a lot more rounder than before. So if I maybe set this to two, you can even see how even two is too much for this one. So I set it to one and we can actually see what's going on in this, looking at it, looking at it this way. The whole bevel depth here now will make it so that the holes in the middle aren't so beveled out. Then maybe you can up, uh, add more to this. Let's move the whole bevel depth down some even more. But it's got this thing in the middle, so I mean, it didn't work so hot. So you can see what the whole bevel depth does if I scroll around there. I'll set this back to one where it worked well. And then your extrusion depth, if I turn this a little more sideways, just determines how far out this uh, extrudes. So if I put this at 10, it's gonna cut the depth in half. If I turn it to 30, it's gonna make it even farther out. So that's how you make your object uh, 3D. Uh, that was basic, a basic rudimentary quick uh, tutorial on how to do that. If you're more interested in some of the different uh, aspects of the 3D, check out the making 3D text tutorial that I had. It's probably a couple tutorials back in the new Boston's channel. So thanks for watching this one, and I hope you guys use this all the time because this is going to be the new fad in CS6. I mean, actually, it already is. It's so much easier than having to create a 3D logo in something like Maya or Cinema 4D or 3DS Max or something like that and importing it in here it just saves you a whole lot of time so you guys use this up it's gonna be awesome put it in some of your cool projects and I thank you for watching and I'll check you out check you guys later